folks and welcome back to another beautiful sunny blue sky day down here in Cornwall. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Thanks for tuning in again. You can probably see from the b-roll footage there that I'm back running in Merrill's new MTL Long Sky 2 Matrix. So I did a first impression on it a couple of weeks ago, really enjoyed the performance of the shoe and I asked in that video if some of you guys would like to see a long run test really positive about that lots of you said yes so we're back out here today running in the Merrill shoe and we're going to be doing a long run across the Towns. it's so good to be feeling the warmth of the sun again and the Towns is looking pretty spectacular so we're going to be heading across towards sort of God Reavy, towards the lighthouse I'm not sure how far we're going to run I had a sports massage yesterday sometimes my legs can feel quite heavy after a massage so as we get running I'll have a better idea but hopefully we'll get in about 14 to 15 miles which will be a great test for this quite stripped back lightweight trail shoe. Also along the way, we're gonna answer some of your frequently asked questions on the channel because we've been having some great questions from you guys. So like I said, we're gonna head out, see how the legs feel, see how far we run, and we're gonna answer lots of those questions. Let's get running. four miles in already and uh, legs and body actually feel all right you never really know until you get running but yeah feeling pretty strong which is a good thing because I'm actually doing this run on the Friday before the KVK that's coming up tomorrow so I thought I'd make a sort of back-to-back -back weekend of it 15 miles today and then a really challenging 15 miles tomorrow at the race with a thousand meters of elevation uh, actually speaking of races that kind of leads me on to the first question so Recently, we uploaded a video showing you all the exciting races and the traveling plans we got for this year. And if you haven't checked that video out, it's definitely worth watching because it is gonna be a wicked year for Run For Adventure, that's for sure. So in that video, I announced that Liga has got a place in the CCC at UTMB, which is gonna be her biggest challenge to date, without a doubt. And a couple of people ask, is Liga gonna be doing more sort of specific training for that race compared to what she did when she ran the Serpent 100K? And I've gotta say, it, the answer is a big fat yes, because she really does need to get in a lot more specific training for a mountain 100K. Don't get me wrong, 100K is a super tough challenge on any terrain. And I really think it's the first sort of ultra distance where things can go wrong big time. But when you compare that to the sort of 100K of the Serpent Trail, you know, a sort of undulating course, there is a fair bit of elevation in the first half of the race, which hopefully I'm gonna find out about because fingers crossed I'm gonna be running it this year. Uh, the first time I've taken on the whole course. So really excited about that. But then when you compare it to the CCC, that is a whole different ball game. So if you're not familiar with UTMB and the CCC, the race starts in Cormier, Italy, and then you go across to Switzerland, and then you come back to Chamonix in France and finish, hopefully, under that iconic finish line in front of the church in the center square. Along the way, you've got over 6,000 meters of elevation, some super tough climbs, some real tricky technical descents, and Liga's gonna be running through the night for the first time, and she's doing it in the mountains, so it really is a big challenge. So the plan is we're going to get out to Chamonix early, probably at the beginning of August, and we are going to spend a lot of time up in the mountains training together. We're going to hopefully get out on the actual route of the race and run the whole route. We're going to be doing lots of big climbs, lots of long descents to really condition those muscles in the legs because that's the hardest thing, living at sea level, getting the body conditioned for those long descents. The legs can really seize up over time and you can really struggle to walk, let alone run. Also, you've obviously got to acclimatize yourself to the thinner air. Chamonix is at a thousand meters itself. And then obviously in the race, you're going up a lot higher and staying up quite high for long periods of time. 
really tough to condition yourself for that type of race here in the UK. And like I say, living at Cornwall at sea level isn't the best place to live, that's for sure. So spending some time out at Chamonix, getting in some quality training in the race environment really is gonna help Liga with her biggest challenge to date. Being able to be out in the mountains and train before the race again, it's a great place to test out all the kit. She's probably gonna be out there on the race route for 24 hours or maybe even a little bit longer. So you definitely wanna make sure all your kit is tried and tested. And we can also work through a nutrition and hydration plan. Plus you can get familiar with the route, which I think is a massive help when you're taking on a, a pretty daunting challenge. So like I said, when she did uh, the Serpent Trail, she probably did just about enough training to get through and to have a good day out on the trails. She was doing probably 40 miles a week in her long weeks, longest run about 20, 22 miles. She wasn't there to race, she just wanted to have an adventure and she definitely had that. She ran a really sensible race, super strong. She's great at running distance, she's got a strong mind. And she crossed that finish line with a big smile on her face and it was a very proud day and she ticked off her first 100 kilometers. But Taking on 100k in the mountains is definitely a much bigger and daunting challenge. But like I said, with good preparation, I'm going to be crewing her, helping her along the way. Hopefully I don't get on her nerves too much and I'm sure she's going to have an epic day out in the mountains. Anyway, I've waffled on a bit there and I forgot to mention, obviously we're going to be bringing the cameras along, all them training runs. I'm going to be filming the race so that you guys can come along and experience it with us. And, you know, hopefully if you're thinking about taking on a, a tough, challenging mountain race and you're a little bit intimidated by it, then these videos will help give you the confidence to have a go because it really is a spectacular environment to run in. And speaking of running, I suppose we better get moving. We won't get these miles done if we're walking. Okay, so we're just coming up to seven miles on the run and the MTL Long Sky 2 Matrix, it's feeling really good. It's actually really cool to be back in the shoe again. I love that sort of lightweight, nimble, responsive feel. But for a pretty stripped back trail shoe, it gives you really good cushioning underfoot. So we've had a big mix of terrain. We've had tarmac to get to the trails. We've had some rocky trails, loose gravelly stuff. And we really did soak it all up with ease. Trying to find a lightweight connected trail shoe that can handle the longer stuff is quite a tricky thing. So. This is why I wanted to get out and test it today on a longer run. The only doubt I had after the first run was heel comfort because that heel and ankle collar is pretty stripped back. And I felt towards the end of the run that maybe there was a little bit of irritation there, but so far so good today. So could have been just because it was the first run and it needed a bit of bedding in. So yeah, fingers crossed. We won't have any problems or any issues with it later on. time for question two and recently in the UK we've actually had some sunshine so I've posted a few pictures on Instagram and in our last video I was running in the sun and I had my sunglasses on this week I've had a few comments on YouTube and a few questions in Insta what running sunglasses do I recommend and what running sunglasses do I wear well I tend to go for Sun God sunglasses I've worn them for a couple of years now I would definitely recommend them. They are my sunglasses of choice, but that does come with a bit of a caveat because I'm actually a brand ambassador for them. So I've been wearing their glasses for about a year and a half, really enjoying the performance. And they contacted me and asked if I'd like to come and join their ambassador program. Obviously I jumped to the chance because I was a big fan of the product, but I also like what the brand stands for. So Sun God are actually a certified B Corp business and they put lots of time and effort into being as sustainable as possible. So they do use lots of recycled materials in their sunglasses and their packaging. And they really do have some nice attention to details when it comes to sustainability. They also have a brilliant selection. So you've got performance driven sunglasses, you've got lifestyle sunglasses like I'm wearing today, lots of different models, lots of different styles. I tend to go for their lifestyle 
lifestyle sunglasses because one, they feel great and super comfy to run in, but they also look good when you're just wearing them casually. The other thing I really like is you can customize your sunglasses. So you can pick out the color of frames, the sort of finish on the frame, the logos and the lenses. So it really allows you to sort of put your own spin on the sunglasses you're buying. But you can also pick out the performance of the lenses that go in your sunglasses. So there's four to choose from. You've got standard polarized, you've got 8KO, and then you've got their range topping 8KO polarized. I've actually got that lens in these sunglasses. First time I've ever used that lens. and all I can say is wow the performance is amazing super clear no glare no reflection at all you know it really is impressive I think it's worth paying that little bit extra for the level of performance it gives so there you have it folks my running sunglasses of choice are Sun Garden like I've said before on the channel if it's good enough for Courtney Dorwater and Tom Evans then they are definitely good enough for me so there's actually a link to Sun God's website in the description below definitely worth going and checking out if you're in the market for a new pair of sunglasses or you just want to see what the guys are up to but that's uh, question number two answered I think we better get running Okay, yeah. Good to see you, mate. Thanks for the company. Hope you feel better soon. <laughs> that was nice. Bumped into Stuart, the guy who used to come in the shop, use the shop, and local runner. And we passed a good, oh, wow, a good five miles together. That went super quick, having a bit of company, having a chat along the way, always good. So, 12 and a half miles done. We are on our way home. Shoes and body and legs are feeling good. Oh, I know you never give up unless it's real. A slippery slope is not Okay, that is the run, just about done. So 15.2 miles so far, about half a mile to go to a home and body and legs have felt great. I think bumping into Stuart, running five miles with him really helped pass the time. But last question. So this is something that gets asked on the channel all the time. If you're familiar with the channel, then you've probably heard me answer this several times. And I become known for wearing bright socks with bright shoes. You can see in this video, I've matched a pair of pink socks with a pair of pink trail shoes. It's a bit sad, but I like doing it. It makes me feel happy. People ask all the time, where do I get my socks from? Who makes them? So I run in Stance running socks obviously made by Stance. They do a great selection of socks in lots of bold colors, great designs. Uh, I don't just run in their running specific socks. I wear their performance socks and sometimes their casual socks. And I find they all run really well and they are super durable. So yeah, the socks you tend to see me wearing with all the bright colors and the flashy designs are made by Stance. But even better than my body feeling good, the shoes have run well. And I was a little bit concerned about that heel towards the end of that first run it was feeling a little bit sore after nine and a half miles so i really didn't know how it would perform today i've had no upper issues at all so that's a big thumbs up for me when it comes to upper comfort but let's get back to the studio and we'll wrap up this video with a quick conclusion so by the time we got back home i'd almost hit 16 miles and in fact 15.78 miles to be precise a uh, really good run but i'm not sure my legs are going to thank me when i'm pushing up those big hills on the kvk tomorrow but it's definitely some solid training mileage in the legs for events coming later in the year i'm also really happy to say that the mtl long sky 2 passed the long run test with flying colors and handled the distance really well. I mentioned it on the first impressions video that it feels like the Long Sky 2 has a bit more volume and a bit more width in the toe box when I compare it to the Agility Peak 5. However, I have heard that these and the Agility Peak 5 are built off the same last, but it really does feel like this gives me a bit more space in the toe and I'm really liking it. It feels like my feet can be a bit more relaxed while I'm running. 
I'm also really happy to say that I had no heel issues at all. So no rubbing, no chafing or anything like that. And in fact, the whole upper just felt really good out there today. Nice and lightweight, really airy, so super breathable. And it gave me a really good lockdown around my midfoot and it stayed locked down throughout the run. The outsole performed just like you'd expect a five mil lugged Vibra Mega Grip rubber outsole to perform. So it handled all those different types of terrain really well. No mud on today's run, but we definitely tested the shoe out on the first impressions video in muddy conditions. And this five mil lug offered me great levels of traction in some tricky underfoot conditions into Hiddy Woods. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description below because it's definitely worth checking out. And then last but not least, midsole performance. And just like out on that first run, it did a really good job today. I find that this dual density float pro foam actually offers you more cushioning than you're expecting. And you know, the Long Sky 2 doesn't have a deeply stacked midsole, but comfort levels are good. Don't get me wrong, it's not gonna offer you a super cushioned bouncy feel of say a Hoka Spigo or the Agility Peak 5, but for a lightweight trail shoe, it's given me good levels of comfort and underfoot protection on both runs so far. So wrapping up, and I think Merrill have produced a great lightweight trail running shoe with the new MTL Long Sky 2 Matrix. I have heard of a few durability issues, shoes falling apart quite quickly when it comes to the standard version of these. So I'm really hoping that with these having a full Matrix upper, it is gonna be nice and durable. Uh, and also, you know, if you've been a fan of the Agility Peak 5 like I have, and you're looking for that sort of lighter, more responsive trail shoe for those quicker, shorter runs, or maybe even to lace up on race day, then these will definitely do that. And I also think that if you've got a pair of the Agility Peak 5s and you had a pair of these, that you've pretty much got every single trail running shoe scenario covered. And just before we go, after my first impressions video featuring the new trail running shoe from Ron Hill, The Reverence, a few of you guys asked if we'd be trying out the other shoe in their trail running lineup, The Freedom. Happy to say that Ron Hill have just sent me a pair of The Freedom, so that shoe will be featuring on the channel very soon. Uh, but for now guys, thanks for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, really hope the questions that we answered have been helpful. If they have, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe because it really is a big help to the channel. We'll be back here very soon with some more exciting running content. And as always, stay safe and keep on running with the new MTL Long Sky 2 Matrix. You know, if you are... Uh, Really happy to say that Ron Hill have just sent me a pair of the Freedom, so that shoe will be appreciating, no, featuring, featuring, not a preacher, a preachering, it's not even a word. Lots of positivity coming back, and a lot of you guys said, yes, you would like to see the wind strikes again. It might be sunny, but there is a real wind. I don't know, you can't win them all, can you?